Solar capable power stations like this one have become ubiquitous in the preparedness community. And for good reason, because they're extremely useful during an emergency. But there are some misconceptions about how they should be used or how they can be employed that I wanted to try to clarify in this video to also give you some ideas about what you might want to do with your power stations or why you might actually need one. So this is actually the Dabson 2000L and it was provided to the channel for the purpose of this video. And in fact, Dabson even compensated my time reviewing this particular unit, so I wanted to give you that full disclosure before we get going. There will be links down in the description as well as in the pinned comment because right now, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because it's extremely affordable compared to its competition, and for what it brings to the table, it's really hard to beat. So first off, let's talk about what these units are good for and how I use them specifically, all right? The best thing about these units, they're an all-in-one situation. It's not something that you can DIY yourself as easily when it comes to providing all of the different outlets and accessibility and all the different inputs and everything that it brings along with it, especially in this compact of a size. And that's probably what this particular unit has going for it the most, but we'll talk about that later. Now, the reason why I brought that up is because these units are very mobile, which means you can take them with you quite easily. If you have a vehicle, Throwing this in your vehicle is a no-brainer during an emergency situation because your vehicle's battery might not be able to handle some of the power that you need for certain items or because you end up at a different location than where your vehicle is and you can still bring this along with you during that transition period in order to have a power supply. The other thing that it's very good for would be setting up some sort of outpost, like a surveillance outpost or some sort of forward operating base type scenario in any type of collapse situation where you have a group of people that are defending a certain area or a territory and you need to have somewhere everybody can go back to charge their comms, charge their drones, and keep everything up and running when it comes to things like Starlink or other communications devices that will allow you to be more effective while also maintaining a smaller footprint because this doesn't burn gasoline, it doesn't have any signature, it doesn't make any noise, and it can recharge via solar panels like you see right here out in the field without issue. So I think for those types of situations, these are often overlooked because we think of things like, you know, rifles and we think of things like plate carriers and then backpacks full of survival gear like water purification or shelter or whatever else it might be. But having something that can provide power to all of the devices that we've come to rely on can be a game changer. So keep that in mind, but I think that's something that this would be very good for and is often overlooked regarding that type of employment. Now, another thing that I specifically use them for that I think they're very good for and that I want you to be aware of because I think it's how most average people will use these things in a preparedness scenario. I use it as bedroom backup power. Now that's gonna sound strange, but my house has a backup power system already installed and what this does is allow me to bring additional power to the bedrooms or the circuits that aren't part of that backup power system and maintain a level of stability in that area of the home. But it also allows me to then take this item and use it daily as a pass-through. Now, what does that mean? So with these types of power stations, like this Dabson 2000L, you can use it as a pass-through power source. So you plug it into the wall and then you plug in whatever other items you need to maintain power into the Dabson. And then if the power goes out at any point in time, those pieces of equipment maintain their processes. They keep working, whereas they wouldn't otherwise. And at that point, you'd have to go get your power station or employ your backup power of whatever variety you have and that might be a hassle or even cause serious issues. And one of the biggest things I tested this particular unit with was a CPAP machine because I had my mom visiting me here recently and she stayed in our home. And I used this as a pass through to ensure that even if there was some sort of a power situation, her CPAP machine would work through the night. And this machine had no issue ensuring that that CPAP worked. And of course, the power pass through function worked perfectly and there was no issues. And the other thing I wanna bring up about that is that Using this as a pass-through means it maintains its full charge capacity while being employed in that way. So if there is a power outage or any type of emergency, you're starting fresh with 100% power. So that's one of the main ways that I use these items when it comes to especially parts of my home that aren't covered by the backup system or for certain required equipment that I need to ensure 
keeps working regardless of whether or not the power is on. And things like a CPAP machine or other medical devices easily qualify for that. But of course, in other forms of emergency, this could relate to things like your comm system. Maybe you're relying on radios in order to ensure you have information and intelligence based on what's happening on the ground or whatever it may be. And this allows those items to keep working even if your power suddenly shuts down or whatever happens. So that's one of the main ways that I use these. And to be honest, you would think you'd use them more often in the sense of using them with solar or using them with like a car charger or anything along those lines out in the field in a more mobile aspect. But I find them to be more beneficial in that stationary pass through scenario because of all the things that we just talked about. So there are some things I want to go over regarding this particular unit. And like I said, you know, Dabson, they supplied the unit to the channel. They made sure that I received compensation for my time doing the review and discussing the product itself. And of course, there's links down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment to get some really good deals right now that they have going on, which I believe only lasts until July 14th or something like that. So like it's, it's happening right now and right now would definitely be the time to act. So what are the specifications of this unit? First off, the most important thing about it is its size and portability. It's 11 inches by 18 inches by nine inches. So it's not very big as you can see with it right here on the table next to me and it weighs 41 pounds. Now, that sounds like a lot at a glance while I'm getting bit by something, um, but at the same time, it's not very much compared to other competitive units from other manufacturers or brands that do the same exact amount of power output and have the same capacity. So in regards to other similar power stations, this one is very compact and relatively lightweight. Now, this has a 2048 watt hour capacity using a life PO4 battery, which is lithium iron phosphate. Now these are good batteries. They have a very long lifespan and it also has a very good output. This can put out 2200 watts and surge all the way up to 4400, but it talks about having a power boost that allows it to go up to, I believe 3200. So of course that's going to be in certain circumstances where maybe a compressor is kicking on for a refrigeration unit that you're using it for, whatever it may be. But in general, I always try to operate within the bounds of what it's supposed to be used for, which is 2,200 watts, okay? Now, it does support AC wall charging, which is how you get it charged up the fastest. And these can charge pretty fast from the wall. In about an hour and a half, it'll be at 80%. So it's not the fastest out there. There are some other brands and manufacturers that charge much faster, but at the same time, you have different limitations based on its compact size. So it does have that. It also has the car charging option, which means you could use, you know, the battery port in your vehicle to charge this, which is beneficial just in case you're out with it mobile, right? And having more charging options is better. And of course, it's also solar capable and it can actually receive up to 800 watts of solar input, which is not bad at all. And can definitely get this thing up and running because with that 2048 watt hour capacity, I mean, there's only so much power you can store in this. So just do the math and you'll see that it actually gets recharged pretty quick if you have the solar capacity to do so. Whereas this solar panel right here is about 160 watts or at least rated for it. So you're gonna need a lot more solar than this to get this thing fully charged that quickly, but it does have that capability, which I find to be beneficial. Now, it uses the typical XT60 cable for that solar charging capacity, which is this cable right here, one of the yellow tipped ones. And of course it's the same cable you would use for the car charging aspect as well. And then it just has your standard AC plug that you would use for your wall. Okay, this battery life is 4,000 charge cycles or 10 years. So it lasts a very long time, especially for the price point it's currently at, which I'll tell you about here in just a second. It's got a five-year extended warranty, which is very good, actually. I've worked with other companies in the past where it's only one or two years, so five years is very good. And it is an uninterrupted power supply, which means that if the power goes out, it kicks on so fast that most of your electronics aren't gonna shut down in the process. So that's why it's great to have for things like CPAP machines. That's why it's great to have for a computer or something that's very important to keep running and ensure that it's not gonna suddenly, uh, you know, lose all the data and everything that you had been working on or whatever it may be. So that uninterrupted power supply is extremely beneficial and also safe for your electronics and everything else uh, because of the way that it's configured. Now, it has six AC, inputs it has uh four or outputs sorry outlets let's call them six ac outlets it has a car outlet 
It has four USB outlets. Two of them are USB-C and two are USB-A. It has a lot of outlets, so it can cover a lot of devices simultaneously and still run very well. Now, here's why I wanted to bring this one to your attention. Right now, it's under $600. That's still a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of solar power stations, it's actually very well priced. And in fact, just so we're on the same page here, this is about half the cost of a similar EcoFlow unit, which would have the same level of output and the same capacity, like literally like 50% of the cost, while also weighing less. The EcoFlow weighs 50 pounds, this one weighs 41, and also being smaller. So that's something I want to bring to your attention because look, I've worked with EcoFlow for years. It's a great company. I've never had any issues with them and they've been very supportive of the channel and I appreciate all the support that they've given me. But in reality, like this Dabson right here does a lot of those same functions for almost half the cost while being smaller and lighter weight, which is one of the reasons why I agreed to review the Dabson and tell you about it because it's surprisingly affordable in comparison. And the model I'm talking about for the EcoFlow would be the Delta 2 Max, just so you're aware. So all in all, I think having a solar capable power station is a good idea. It just makes sense at this point in 2025. We've seen things on the modern battlefield with drone warfare and with all this additional tech being employed. And you need places where you can set up shop and maintain the battery charge and everything else related to that equipment, right? But of course, for the more practical standpoint of just having this in your bedroom and ensuring that whatever you have plugged into it, it's not gonna suddenly shut down if the power goes out, is very useful. And then it being at 100% charge because it's been plugged in the whole time, as soon as there's an emergency, gives you the best case scenario of how much power you actually have stored. So make sure you check out the links in the description as well as in the pinned comment if you're interested in the Dabson 2000L because in all honesty, it's, it's actually a really good device for how inexpensive it is in comparison to other devices. I'm aware that, you know, around 600 bucks less right now anyway, is still a lot of money. But in comparison to things that are $1,000 and do the same thing, but with more weight and more bulk, it's affordable in that comparison, right? And of course, if you have any questions for me, leave it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, but I also hope that the conversation about how I use these units and what I think they're good for was beneficial for you, especially if you've been on the fence about whether or not you want to get one. Now, maybe you have a little bit more information to work with, even if you don't end up using or getting this one or, or whatever it may be um, in the future, if you decide to pick one up, now you have some ideas about why they might be useful. So anything else you need from me at all, you can go to magicprepper.com. There's a lot of good information there. There's also ways to support the channel directly there on the homepage. So make sure you check that out. And besides that, that's going to be it for Magic Prepper.